John Howard. First, though, we're going to look at one of the most comprehensive studies of what Australians really think about the United States. The U.S. Studies Centre, which has been part funded by the government and part funded also by Rupert Murdoch, has conducted research on Australian attitudes towards the United States and the Bush administration's policies. Perhaps not surprisingly, it finds more than 60% of Australians oppose the Iraq war. 50% though also oppose the war in Afghanistan, while some two-thirds view President Bush unfavourably. I spoke a short time ago to the acting chief executive of the US Study Centre, Professor Alan Dupont. Despite President Bush's uh, obvious unpopularity and the opposition to the war in Iraq, there was a very high support nevertheless for the alliance uh, with the United States uh, and for ANSYS. That came out very strongly. 79% of, uh, of the respondents uh, were supportive of the alliance and an even higher 92% thought that uh, the US would continue to be a close security partner uh, for at least the next 10 years. So that was quite an interesting finding. The second uh, issue that I thought really emerged from the, uh, from the survey was the, the um, lack of confidence that Australians have in, Austra in, in US leadership. Uh, only about 37% um, uh, of Australians believed that the US was able to manage global problems. And that compares with about double, the double that percentage only about five or six years ago. So that suggests that there's a, a real loss of confidence uh, in the Bush administration's capacity to handle a whole raft of world problems. So is George Bush really the problem here in uh, affecting Australian confidence in US world leadership? Look, it's pretty clear that President Bush is perceived as being part of the problem and, and most particularly because of his, his policies in, in Iraq. But I think it goes beyond that. I think the President doesn't actually play that well in Australia for a variety of other reasons. Uh, and that's a large percentage, that's a large part of the reason why there's been a loss of confidence in US leadership. Uh, I suspect, therefore, that in, when a new administration comes to power in Washington, that you would start to see those figures rise again. But it's still very difficult to tell. We need to do a lot more work on that. It, it, when you say he doesn't play well in Australia for, all, for a variety of reasons, what are they? Is it his style? Is it a comparison with, with you know, more eloquent, I suppose, uh, presidents like Bill Clinton coming before him? I think it's uh, partly to do with his personality. Um, as I said, doesn't seem to play well to many Australians. Uh, he, see, he comes across, I think, as a fairly uncompromising kind of person. Now, that obviously touches, uh, that, that, that is the reason why he gets quite strong support in the US and the, uh, in the Republican Party. He's seen, he's seen as a man of conviction. But in Australia, it doesn't go down that well. He's also seen as being a little bit behind the times on issues like climate change. So I think all that feeds into, a, obviously, a very unfavourable impression of, of the president. I mean, one of the interesting results was that only 4% had a very favourable view of the president versus 42% who had an unfavourable view. That's a pretty stark contrast. Now, when you mentioned earlier also that once we do see a, a new president take over, uh, uh, in January uh, 2009, you would expect that some of these perceptions will change in Australia. Is it therefore safe to assume that really the, uh, the unpopularity or popularity of US foreign policy really does affect these attitudes towards the United States, that it, that it waxes and wanes depending on the popularity of, of their particular policies? Yes, I think that's true. Um, obviously, the persona of the president does affect overall impressions of the United States. And most of the time, we see the US in its role as a global player, global statesman, and foreign policy is really the prism, and defence for that matter, the prism through which most Australians make judgments about the US. Now, I actually think, though, perceptions may be beginning to shift on a longer-term basis, because if you take out the actual personal factors surrounding President Bush, you can still see some very interesting changes in perceptions towards the US. And I'll give you one example. Uh, when we were looking um, at, for example, um, the confidence levels in the US ability for leadership, as I said, over time they've changed quite a lot. There's also uh, a, a quite a noticeable increase in the number of Australians who want us to take a more independent position vis-a-vis -vis the United States. So 48 per cent of Australians felt we needed to be more independent. That compares with only about 22 per cent back during the Whitlam years and that's quite a, a big shift over time. 
Well, it is. The other interesting finding was, uh, of course, that Australians think our role in the war on terror makes us a bigger target. Now, does that necessarily mean that they don't support our role in the war on terror, or is that a separate question? No, I think that's the right uh, um, judgment to make. Um, it seems to me that while Australians accept that we are a bigger target because of our involvement in the war and against terror, it's, it's a cost that most Australians appear to be prepared to bear. Um, because if you look at some of the other findings in there, you'll see that notwithstanding the, that acceptance, the fact that, we're, that Australians are still continuing to support the US alliance would suggest that Australians can, are able to make that judgment. They can, they can see the risks are greater, but they believe it's a price worth paying for the insurance policy that the alliance provides. Alan DuPont there from the US Studies Centre. So